Number five. All right, coming in at number five is Darkest Dungeon. I got this game on the Nintendo Switch to be a dedicated handheld title. Just so I can play it on the go. And little did I know this was going to be an amazing handheld title. I honestly would not play this on the TV. Because playing this game in handheld makes it so much better. Because they enabled use of the touchscreen. Now this game is on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, PlayStation Vita. And I would honestly say that because of the touchscreen, this is the definitive version playing it on the Switch. Because it takes like, for PC you have a cursor and a mouse and you can click all these different sub-menus. Now, you have it on the touchscreen and you can just touch the screen. And all the other controls that you would normally use with a joystick, what have you, are still there. It's perfectly intuitive to use it that way. And then just to simplify things, you then have the touchscreen to select different options in the sub-menu. So I think this is a perfect fit for the Nintendo Switch. Plus, on top of that, it's just a really good hardcore RPG. This game does not hold your hand. It includes permadeath. And let me tell you, characters are going to die. It's, it's just a part of this game. And there's so many different ways your character loses health from starving... Um, which I actually, the most heartbreaking death for me was losing a character from starving to death. Um, your characters get stressed and get, get ailments from the stress. Um, they obtain ailments just from not completing missions. And you have all these horrific monsters that are trying to kill you within the dungeons. So it's just a really awesome RPG. I think it's made even better by being on the Nintendo Switch. The reason it's not higher on the list though is because with it being harder the game doesn't really hold your hand. It's actually the only game on the list that I haven't completed as of yet. I have put a decent amount of hours into it but I haven't completed it as of yet. And also it just has a very dark tone to it so it might not be for everyone and that's why it's at number five but it's overall just a really great game. And if you like turn-based RPGs, I would definitely check it out. Number four. Coming in at number four is The Fall. And I've been wanting to talk about this game since I started the channel. I think this game is absolutely amazing. This is a game that actually got me into indie games in the first place. It plays like an adventure game, almost like a, a point and click at points where uh, you have the menus that drop down based on where you're looking at, but it controls like a 2D platformer or action game. And the combat system I think is amazing. It reminds me of if Gears of War was a 2D action game. Um, you can get cover behind things and you know it's all shooting. Uh, you can sneak up behind characters and uh break their neck it's just absolutely awesome and the puzzles are great it has a very dark tone to it and it actually has a very dark humor to it as well um being as you're playing as an ai who doesn't have human emotions and you don't really understand um human emotion so um watching your character adapt and watching how it reacts to this world around it is just absolutely amazing. Honestly, I can't really say anything bad about this game. There might be some puzzles where you get a little thrown off a bit, but honestly, for the most part, everything in here is just done flawlessly. It's such a good game, such a good indie game, and I think everyone should go out and pick this up on the Switch. And I actually played it myself for the Wii U, but I do have the sequel to it on the Switch, which you can get after this one. But honestly, for me, I feel like the first one is better. But if you pick this up and play it, you're going to want to continue the story. And they're completing it with a third one. Not sure when that comes out, but either way, this first one is an amazing title. 
So if you have a Nintendo Switch and you like indie titles, go pick this one up. Number three. Coming in at number three, we have Auction Freak. And this game, it's a, it's an adventure title, a 2D side-scrolling adventure title. And you can have ongoing dialogue with the other characters. There's a radio mechanic and there's multiple endings. It's very much a thriller. There's parts where you're really feeling clueless, like what's going on? You feel trapped. It has a lot of thriller-like elements, some horror-type elements. It has everything you could possibly want in an adventure title. And I really love the 2D art style that they chose for this game. I personally, the first time I saw this game, I watched a Let's Play of it. Absolutely enjoyed it. When it came out on the Switch, I was like, I need to get this. I've played it through twice. Each time it was a five-hour playthrough, so I played the game for ten hours. And absolutely enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I got different endings each time. And I honestly don't know how many different endings there are. But... I'm just going to say I was very happy with the second ending that I got. Um, but yeah, this game is really awesome. One of my favorite indie games I've played. And it goes on sale for $5 all the time. It's absolutely worth the $5 price. Even if you're looking at, like, um, I want an hour for every dollar I spend on a game. I spent $5 on it and I played it for 10 hours and I honestly think even if I only played it through once it'd be worth the price even full price this is an absolutely amazing game and I think everyone who has a Nintendo Switch should pick it up number two coming in at number two we have Firewatch and honestly this probably isn't a surprise to most of you with my video talking about Firewatch coming to the Nintendo Switch, I shared my excitement for this game. I just think this game is a really awesome genre. Uh, first person adventure slash walking sim, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it just has a really awesome story. Really amazing setting. Um, I mean, for me, I absolutely love nature. Um, and this just really caught my interest really quick. But even if you're not interested in the nature aspect of this game, the story is really compelling. I watched this in a Let's Play before I played it. I picked it up on the Nintendo Switch and played it. Absolutely adored it just as much as when I, I watched I actually watched multiple Let's Plays of this game. And I just absolutely love it. When I was playing it though, there's parts, and I knew what was going to happen, but there's parts that still made my stomach turn um, with anxiety for the characters. It's just absolutely a stunning game. It made me fall in love with the walking sim um, genre as a whole, and not only is this the best one of the genre on the Nintendo Switch, but it's also one of the best ones ever made in my opinion so if you have a nintendo switch and you haven't played this game yet or if you just want to play it on the go because i honestly played most of the six hour story through in handheld mode and absolutely adored it i would definitely grab this one and also it has a surprising amount of content i didn't know until i bought it how much content it actually has so it has the main story, which is six hours long. You can also play the story through um, in a guided tour mode, which has commentary from the creators of the game. And there's also a free roaming mode where you can just roam the entirety of the National Park freely. So it's a really amazing game. A lot of content, a lot of hours to play. Um, and honestly, it's one of those games where you can just pick it up and just start playing it any time because it, there's no consequence to 
um, only playing it for a little bit or it, there's no pressure in it. You don't, you know, it, it's not a competitive or hardcore gameplay style game. It's, it's almost relaxing in a sense that you can just play through it by going the right directions and you can, you know, play it at any pace. Number one. And coming in at number one is Golf Story. And, you know, this game is just really cool. It was really hard for me to decide between one and two. Um, I really wanted to put Firewatch up here. But, honestly, this game takes the cake. It deserves number one. So, it's a golf RPG, which I don't play golf games all that much. I don't really play sports games all this much. But something about a sports RPG just really... I found really exciting and the story's fun the golf mechanics are actually very comparable to any modern golf game so even though it's this cute 2d style it still plays very much like a modern golf game and I mean I from the time it was announced I wanted this it was actually in development for the Wii U then got moved to the Switch. And it's actually a Nintendo Switch exclusive. And another awesome thing about this game is I honestly, I still tell people that this is the best use of the HD Rumble. So the dialogue is all in dialog boxes, but you'll actually see the dialog boxes move and you'll feel it in the joy cons and it really represents the emotion of what's being said really well and you know it's hard to really get that idea without holding it in your hands but honestly this is my favorite use of the HD rumble and also the gameplay time it my playthrough of it and I did most of the side quests but I got 25 hours out of the main story and there's also multiplayer on this as well so to have a RPG like this have multiplayer I just think is really awesome plus really cool story and I love the top-down Pokemon-esque style graphics so this is my number one pick for indie games on the Nintendo Switch. Guys, it's been fun. And as always, if you like what you saw, and if you want to see another Flawless Top 5 video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. You're all flawless. And you know what? I'm going to see you next time. Bye.